Afternoon everyone, uh, welcome to our latest game. Um, I'm playing against Dan today, say hi Dan. Hi. Hi, so Dan is uh, going to be playing the French and Allies and I'm going to be playing the Prussians. This is actually a scenario that was originally designed for La Salle, I think, rather than for Grand Manor. Um, and I've done a bit of reskinning. So we've uh, this is a scenario originally from the 1809 campaign with Austrians against French and Bavarians. So I've reskinned it. Uh, so we're playing against Prussians. Um, and the French will not be having Bavarian allies, but they will be having allies from the Duchy of Berg. All right, let's have a look at the forces we have on the table. And we'll also uh, just let you know what reserves we've got. So for Dan, we've got a small regiment here uh, of troops from the Berg, two battalions. We've then got uh, a French brigade of two regiments. We've got one regiment here in this village. And a second regiment here in order a mix with some artillery support on this small hill. Dan also has another infantry regiment in reserve and a unit of dragoons. So I mean the French have got uh, nine battalions of infantry and two battalions of Berg, one artillery battery and one dragoon reg reg regiment. All the troops are fighting as normal status troops today. And then for the Prussians on the table to start with, we've got uh, a small horse artillery battery in front of these woods with a limber behind. A small regiment uh, here of two battalions, one in the front of the village and one in support, plus also an attached regiment of Zars. For those of you who uh, might recognise this, this is an Austrian, or well, this was an Austrian advance guard formation, hence the mixing of the Hussars uh, into the battalion. We'll put them under regular brigade command, see how that goes. And then we've got another small brigade down here of further Prussian troops of two regiments. And we've got the skirmish screen uh, for the, uh, sorry, this is all one brigade, but another regiment down here. And we've got the brigade skirmish screen deployed in front of them. The Prussians also have some reserves. They have six more battalions of line infantry they will be able to bring on. And as in all General Darmé games, um, we have to dice for reserves. Actually, all the reserves are made available immediately. They will have a random location entry point, so we won't be sure exactly where they'll come on. Uh, and we'll have to allocate ADCs if we want to bring them onto the table. Uh, and that will obviously mean we won't be able to allocate those ADCs to other things. All right. So that's a bit of an intro blurb. Hope you enjoy the game and we'll crack on with turn one. All right, as I did all the pre-game deployment, um, I'm going to let Dan do a little bit of uh, redeployment of his troops. So he'll shuffle them around a little bit um, and we have rolled for initiative. Uh, the French do have initiative uh, in the game and actually both the Prussian brigades went hesitant despite having three ADCs. So it's a pretty terrible rolling for the Prussians at the beginning of this first turn. All right. Uh, the French will just do a little bit of redeployment and then do their first turn movement. All right, so Dan's done a bit of a redeployment. He's generally moved his arm to his left, my right. So the Berg infantry have now occupied the village and formed a defensive line on the flank. The French who were in the village have deployed out to the left. Otherwise, his forces are unchanged. All right, Dan will now start. Okay, so with the Prussians being hesitant, they didn't really move very much. The Berg infantry moved slightly forward um, across that fence line to support their units in the village. The French started redeploying forward, uh, two battalions here moving across the fences on that field. And the brigade that was in order mix is also moving out towards the village. Now we're on to firing. French opening fire first with their artillery battery and they're going against the uh, Prussian hussars on the hill. That'll be firing at long range. All right, so we get an eight at long range. There'll be no modifiers on this. That's one casualty. First casualty of the game on the Prussian hussars. Right, any other firing, Dan? You're going to fire your skirmishers. They can have a go. Yeah. What are you going to fire at? I think the only thing I could fire at is the other skirmishers. I'm not sure. Yeah, you probably can't good. fire. You might be able to fire one stand into the buildings, but yeah, probably better to fire at the skirmish screen. So you've got how many stands there? You've got six stands, haven't you? Yeah. So that's four combat dice. You lose one for firing at skirmishers. So that will be three dice to fire at the Prussian skirmish screen. Okay, that's good. That's one casualty on the Prussian skirmisher screen. And I think that's it for Prussian for French firing. Over to the Prussians. Okay, so the Prussian skirmishers have opened fire, caused one casualty on the French skirmisher screen, and the garrison opened fire, caused one casualty on the attacking column. We didn't get artillery assault off. We're in fact hesitant, so we can only fire at a target straight ahead. But we do have this French battalion, which is straight ahead, and we can fire at effective range. So firing this battery 
and we get a 4, which is pretty terrible. So at long range, 4 is no effect. And then our small horse artillery battery on the hill here will do some counter battery fire at the French on the hill. That'll be at minus 2 at effective range, probably. Wow, that's pretty good. That's an 11. We will check that. That goes down to a 9. So that will be one casualty in a discipline test on your battery on the hill down. So two dice. Yep, yeah, you're fine. Seven is uh, unshaken. So no other impact but one casualty on the artillery. Okay, so we've done ADCs and activations in turn two. The French have got infantry assault off on this uh, brigade, this uh, regiment in uh, Order Mix uh, and the regiment in the village. So these, all these six battalions have infantry assault down because they're all part of that same brigade. For the Prussians, their brigade with their artillery is active, but the small brigade on the left is again unfortunately hesitant. So uh, the Prussians will be testing at minus one. Let's roll for initiative. Dan, do you want to roll two dice? We get a six, that goes down to a five, and the French get a nine. So the French have initiative in turn two and ch can charge and move first. Okay, so Dan's been aggressive. He's charged his first infantry battalion into this uh, village down here. So we'll see how they do. They've got support from that line. Prussians have also potentially got support from this second battalion in the rear. Otherwise, he's moved his battalions forward to the hedge line, but is being somewhat cautious with the uh, Prussian hussars on the hill, supported by the artillery. Otherwise, the Berg infantry have moved forward. The Prussians really do need to bring some of their reserves on if they're going to counter this overwhelming French force. All right, that's it for uh, movement. There's no charges to declare results of because charges go in automatically against buildings. I do have some closing fire. So, Dan, you couldn't pass me three dice, could you? And I'll just do the closing fire from my garrison, which does one casualty to that battalion that charged in. Uh, but it's still not near four, is it? So it won't, won't, won't cause a modifier. All right, normal firing for the French uh, to go first. What are you going to fire, uh, Dan? Skirmishes at that skirmish. Okay, again, so that was three bases. I think it'll be the same as it was last turn. Yeah. Or three dice worth, thank you. Okay, no casualties this time, so the Prussian screen hangs in there. And then the French artillery, you're going to have another go at long range against the uh, Prussian hussars, I yeah. imagine. So if you can do better than a four, marginally better. A seven, that might be half a casualty, I think. Firing at long range, we'll just check that one out. Long range, a seven is half a casualty, so a four, five or six to convert that. No, no casualties this turn. That's it for French firing, the Prussians will return fire. So the Prussian skirmish screen will go at the French. Doesn't do anything. And then the Prussian heavy artillery battery will go against the same target. Um, we will measure this one. They may be at effective range now. So that might cause an extra combat dice. All right, so the Prussian artillery on the hill are going to open fire. They do get an extra combat dice because they're firing at a column at effective range. That does cause one casualty. And the other shot rolls a seven at effective range. That goes down to a six because the French are in cover. So a six at effective range is one casualty on that battalion, and that takes it up to two because of the combat dice. So that'll be two casualties on that battalion, uh, Dan. On that dice. Uh, don't they take the casualty to spare? Uh, if they're within... I don't think they do for ball shot. That's only when it becomes close range. So uh, when I start firing a, a canister at you. So... Uh, yeah, no, two casualties on the main battalion. And then we'll do some counter-battery fire again with my horse artillery against Dan's heavy artillery. This is at minus two. That will be, indeed, a fatigue casualty, so not a great return for the Prussians. We'll just mark those casualties up. All right, filming the close assault. So uh, five dice for the Prussians, four for the French. Prussians do remarkably badly. That's only two casualties, and the French do two. So that's a draw. So the fight can carry on. I get to choose first as the defender. So let's apply those casualties and we'll see whether we go into a second round. All right, this is going to be a vicious fight. So we've got two, two Prussian battalions fighting two French battalions, both at pretty full strength. Prussians get nine dice, uh, sorry, ten dice. French get nine simply because they've taken four casualties. Let's see how the French do. Oh, doesn't look too bad. So the Prussians do one, two, three, four casualties. Not great for the Prussians. The French do four casualties, so it's a draw. 
All right, let's see what happens in the second round of combat. But first, we have to mark those casualties up. All right, we're now uh, on to firing. So uh, Dan's moved his skirmish screen across and hasn't really moved any of his other troops forward. So we're having a bit of a pause in the combat this turn. Um, all right, so Prussians will open fire with their artillery. Could have a blue dice, Dan. All right, that'll be the combat dice going against that battalion in the centre. We roll a seven and a three. The three doesn't do anything. The seven will cause one casualty, I think. Okay, a six. Just getting the chart. A six at effective range is one casualty. So one casualty on that battalion. And then uh, our horse artillery battery from the hill will fire at your battery again. Minus two on this die roll. We roll a nine. That goes down to a seven. That's half a casualty at long range. Yep, half a casualty at long range. See if we convert it. We don't. So that's no effect. That's all the Prussian firing in turn three. Over to the French for their firing. All right, in turn four, uh, Dan's charged again. He's moved forward with the whole regiment this time, this battalion on the left attacking this part of the village and the other two battalions up in support. He's just thinking about normal movement. No charges from the Prussians and the Prussian defensive volley caused one casualty against the attacking French column. All right, uh, we'll now do more normal movement for both sides in turn four. All right, the, uh, the um, cavalry on the hill are going to take a shot uh, from Dan's uh, heavy artillery. Let's see how they do. You got artillery assault off with your orders. Pretty good, so you get one bonus casualty and a seven at long range. I think a seven might still only be half a casualty at long range. Yeah, you need an eight to be a full casualty, so half a casualty. So see if you convert the, the half. You don't, but you do cause one casualty against this battery. That takes them, oh, sorry, it's against the cavalry, isn't it? Takes the cavalry up to two casualties. All right, what about your skirmish screen then? You can fire your skirmish screen then? Yeah, at the skirmishers. Oh, at the skirmishers. Uh, I thought he was going to fire it at my artillery battery. He's changed target. All right, so that's uh, three dice to fire at my skirmish screen. And this skirmish screen down. Four. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a difficult choice. The cannons are a lot more of a threat. Obviously, you might get a a false test. But if you roll like that. You won't get nothing. <laughs> All right, no casualties from the skirmisher screen. Um, any other firing? You haven't moved your Berg skirmishers forward, so no other firing. Time for some return fire from the Prussians. All right, rolling for this latest French assault on the village. Uh, Prussians get four, and they cause two casualties. French cause two casualties. My gosh, this is a better result, and there'll now be one hell of a scrap as all the reserves pile into this combat. Okay, so the French should have a good chance of breaking in here because it's three battalions attacking just two defending Prussians. But we'll do well. Well, we won't. We only cause three casualties. Oh my God, the French have finally done a decent die roll. So two, five, eight, nine casualties on the Prussians. The Prussians have been routed and the French will storm into the village. All right, this is showing just how quite how tough this game is for the Prussians, although they've got plenty of reserves to bring on. Uh, we need the ADCs to do it. And uh, again, we're not going to have the ADCs. I should have done it earlier in the game when I had that artillery assault. I should have used that to bring some reserves on. This is not looking good. The French have piled into that village, um, although a couple of their battalions have taken reasonably heavy casualties. The defending Prussian regiment is pretty much devastated. One battalion's taken 11, the other one has taken 6. And we have a falter test on... Uh, this battalion, including the two artillery batteries. If we lose that, there's not a lot left for the Prussians to play with. All right, that's it for the end of turn four. Uh, I think this is the end of turn four. What's the turn number, uh, Dan? Four. End of turn four. On we go with turn five. All right, so both of us have got two ADCs at the start of this critical fifth turn. Let's see uh, how you roll, Dan. Let's roll your activation. So your attacking brigade. Uh, I'll start with those. Ones. Oh, you're starting with the Berg. Okay, they've got a reroll. They are active, and then your attacking brigade is active. All right, my falter tests, we get a five. That's a good result. We obey orders so they don't flee off the table. The Prussians do have some future. All right, let's move on and roll for initiative. Uh, I'll have to roll from my other brigade. Hey, 
For the first time in five turns, this brigade is not hesitant. So no peasant penalties on the Russians on the Prussians this turn. We'll roll for Prussian initiative. Prussians get an eight. What do the French get? A two. All right, the Prussians do get initiative. There may be some opportunities to respond. So we're on turn five or turn six, Dan? Turn five. Okay. So in turn five, uh, the Prussians have started moving this brigade forward that was on the defensive, uh, now moving up towards the village on the left. The French are still in a, conun a, con a quandary here. So we've got three battalions uh, in column here uh, being pinned and not wanting to go into line because of the presence of the Prussian hussars. Prussian hussars themselves charge the French skirmishers who've fallen back uh, to behind those woods. Uh, they did pass their... their uh, their um, discipline test and so they're okay otherwise the French have formed up in the garrison on the village and the Prussians have formed up opposite the village but don't have the strength to charge in but they have pivoted both their artillery batteries so the Prussians have initiative they'll open up with their artillery against the village to start with all right opening up first with the heavy artillery battery this will be at close range um, uh, but it will be at half effect and minus three well not a bad roll so a 10 goes down to a 7, and at half effect, it's half a casualty, and when you round half a casualty down, you don't get anything. So even with a 10 down, I don't cause anything, and the other battery gets an 8, so it also will cause no casualties. But minus 3 only takes that down to a 5. So no fatigue casualties for myself, but nothing uh, from the fire. All right, we can fire our um, skirmishers against the buildings. Um, but actually that will cause no effect because it's minus two for firing at a built up area and you only get two shots if you're a small skirmish screen so they can't do anything. We'll fire these skirmishers against the Berg skirmishers and we don't cause any casualties. And that's it for Prussian firing. So pretty ineffective, not a single casualty on the French. All right, chance for the French to open up your Berg skirmishers first down. That will just be one dice against my skirmish screen, which you do cause a casualty with. That's unjust. All right, um, your other skirmish screen fell back this turn, so can't fire. Um, your guns firing at long range, what are they going to fire at? Wait, wait, the infantry on the hill, yeah. How much do they have? Six, I think. Six. Okay, so this will be at long range. You want more than a five. <clears throat> what can they shoot at the cavalry? You can shoot at cavalry. Uh, they're out of arc, you'd have to pivot them in your movement phase. Okay, so that's half a casualty. Roll again, see if you cause convert one. Yay, so cause a casualty that up to seven casualties, I think. All right, that's it. That's the end of turn five. On we go with turn six. All right, so the Berg infantry have remained stationary, but their skirmish screen has moved up to screen the uh, Prussian skirmishers. The Prussians themselves in the centre continue to advance against this village. And the cavalry has now cleared all of these abstractions and obstacles to potentially threaten the French. The French themselves have deployed into order mix. Um, and I'm uh, going to house rule that in order mix, because both flanks are secure, the line will not take uh, the line penalty if charged. Um, otherwise, Dan's moved his skirmisher screen across to put some pressure probably on my uh, horse artillery. That, that's a bit cheeky of him. Um, that will come into play next turn. All right, that's it for um, movement. Any other movement for the French, Dan? No, I don't think so. All right, okay, that's it for movement. Now for the Prussians firing. So seeing the threat coming along, my horse artillery decided to fire at the skirmishers. We rolled a three, and with a minus two penalty for targeting skirmishers, unfortunately, we've now gone low on ammo. This unit's taken three casualties and has gone low on ammo and hasn't caused a single casualty, I don't think, in the whole game. All right, our main artillery battery is going to go against this French battalion behind the hedge. They did move this turn. I think that's at effective range. And we roll a nine. And that goes down to an eight because you're in cover, but that's three casualties. Um, and actually there will be a combat dice as well, uh, Dan, because you're in column. Okay, so three casualties and a discipline test against the red flagged French battalion behind that tree. Can we shoot the cavalry? Okay, so now firing for the French. Actually, we revised that because uh, Dan pointed out I had swung these guns across. Um, so um, so that was minus two on my firing, so it wasn't three casualties, it was only one casualty on that battalion. All right, so I'm firing from uh, Dan, so your Berg skirmisher screen, perhaps. Okay, against infantry, two dice. 
uh, but it actually only be one dice because I'm behind the hedge, but you cause one casualty on me. Okay. That infantry can keep the cover. I think they're probably out of arc of fire. From the middle of the unit, it's got to be 45 degrees. Oh. But you probably can fire at one of these if you want. Okay. If you're within nine, you need to measure the range. No. Okay. You could fire your line as an inferior volley if you want at yes. the cavalry. So this would be an inferior volley because you moved. Um. A seven is one casualty on the cavalry. All right. And you could fire your column as well. That will be at half effect and an inferior volley because it moved. That can definitely fire at the cavalry because they're within that arc. Or it could fire at the skirmishers. Probably fire at the cavalry if I were you. Okay. okay, pretty good, a nine. So an inferior volley is two casualties in a discipline test. That becomes one casualty, but still a discipline test. Can I have another dice down? So they are now on seven casualties that's not great so it's discipline test at minus one seven so they go unformed that's they won't be able to charge next turn so that's good for the french okay um firing from any of the garrisons dan yeah uh, at the cannons okay that'll be three dice at the cannons oh wow that's two more casualties on the cannon takes him up to five and then you've got artillery assault from the artillery battery on the hill. What are you firing at there? Uh, the, the infantry at the back. Okay, uh, that'll be at long range then. Um, don't know, we've lost all the red dice. There we go. Okay, so that's two extra casualties and a five. The five is half a casualty, so see if you can convert the half. Nope, so that's two more casualties. So they're still on the table, but they are now on nine casualties, so not in a great state. Okay, that's it for movement and firing. That's the end of turn six. No close combats this turn. On we go with turn seven. Okay, so the Prussians only got two ADCs, uh, but given the gravity of the situation, they decided to take a risk and put both of those ADCs onto bringing some reserves on. So unfortunately this brigade in front of the French lines and this village has gone hesitant, as has our artillery battery in the centre. But we did succeed in our reserves roll. So we have brought on a Landwehr regiment. So three new battalions of Landwehr have moved onto the table to potentially threaten a counterattack against this village. Dan's moved his skirmisher screen up, I'm potentially going to knock out this horse artillery battery this turn. I should have pulled it back, I forgot to do that. Uh, but otherwise no movement from the French. All right, uh, that's Prussian movement done. It's uh, movement for the French. Dan, have you got any movement? Oh, you moved your skirmish screen, so it's firing. Firing for the Prussians to start. Okay, so we do have a falter test this turn. So combined fire from the French skirmish screen and the garrison in this building has knocked out the horse artillery battery. So uh, we'll now roll for ADCs as we start turn eight. For my on-table battalions, I've got two. Ah, I've actually, actually got three on-table. So I've got three ADCs, and my off-table doesn't come off. So I'll allocate two to my re-roll, uh, and one for my land there. So the land there is active, this brigade is active, and then I've got my falter tests for the uh, brigade, which has lost the horse artillery. They're all a six, they're bay orders. We've been really lucky on our falter tests. So that brigade stays in the game. All right, have you done, Dan, on your activations? Uh, third, active. At least I've got a reroll. Active. Okay, so everything's active. Yeah. So straight roll off for initiative. We get a four, French get a six. French have initiative in turn seven. Okay, so we've completed turn eight. Uh, Dan's still playing conservatively over here. The French formations are uh, lining this hedge line and the Berg are still holding the village. The Prussians have moved up to put pressure on, but are just out of musket range. Both sides are not wanting to close that distance. And I think I'll lose the musket exchange. So the Prussians are being cautious here. The Hussars are a good threat at pinning the French back earlier in the game. have taken eight casualties, so I'm cautious with them. Dan's moving his very effective skirmisher screen back into position in the centre 
and his long-range artillery fire has been effective. And that French, sorry, Prussian battalion that was on the hill here, the remnants of the brigade that were holding the village, that broke this turn. It got hit and failed its discipline test. We rolled a three. Uh, so it's retreated off table. Because it's one retreat result, the remnants of that brigade, the hussars uh, and the heavy, cav heavy artillery, remain on table. Um, but the brigade is now broken um, and will only activate on a five. All right, that's it for uh, turn end of turn eight. We now start turn nine and ADCs. Some important roles. The Prussians do have uh, this fresh uh, land wehr regiment. We've only got three turns left. Don't think we're going to get our second brigade into the game. Uh, we'll see if we can throw this one in and dislodge the French from this objective. So rolling for ADCs, I've got my Landwehr and my other full-strength brigade. That's uh, just one ADC. And then I've got my Broken Brigade and my other off-table brigade. Gives me a second ADC. So the Prussians have two ADCs. One on table and off table. Not two off, so two overall. All right. And we are going to put Infantry Assault on this Prussian Brigade with no reroll for the Landwehr. It comes off, fortunately. Our other attacking brigade goes hesitant and our heavy artillery goes hesitant. So we're minus two and our existing army is hesitant, but the land there are active. Let's roll for activation for the French starting. I've got two for the reserves. Okay. The cavalry reserves. Okay. okay, yeah, the dragoons, cool. Reserve active. Yeah. This one over here. Active. active. Come on, reserve. Yeah. Active, all right. Dan's got his dragoons. Okay. Uh, let's mark those up, and then we'll roll for initiative. I'm on minus two. Well, I'm on a two. This looks like it's going to be French initiative in turn nine. It is indeed. They rolled the double six. <laughs> At the time, the double six is not valuable. All right, French have got initiative, and we'll just mark those hesitant status up. All right, at the start of turn nine, the Landwehr have decided it's, uh, it's all or nothing now. The game is in the balance. The French have brought on uh, some Hazards uh, as reserves, the rest of their position looks pretty impregnable. The only weak spot potentially is the garrisons in the village over here. So the land there have charged in. Um, and there's a defensive volley to do. So uh, Dan, over to you. Uh, roll your defensive shots from the garrison. Three dice, needing fives or sixes. Nope, nothing from the defensive volley. That will go into melee later in the turn. All right, uh, Dan, you have initiative. So if you finish movement, we're on to fire. All right, so we're done firing in turn, in turn nine, pretty ineffective. The skirmishers over here did virtually nothing to one another. Uh, Dan caused an extra casualty on my Prussian skirmish screen down here. He might break it next turn, which would be another fall to test on this really damaged brigade in the center. Everything else over here is out of range. Dan fired his artillery and caused a casualty on this Landwehr battalion here. I fired my artillery and did a casualty on that French battalion in the woods. So no major, uh, no major losses from fire this turn. Now to the big event as these three fresh uh, Prussian battalions charge into the village. All right, as Dan's pointed out, I don't have infantry assault, so I won't have any supports for a second round of combat. All or nothing, can the Prussians make it in? Four casualties. No, we do two. It's not impossible. It is there. Okay, so we lose by one. We will fall back. All right, so turn 10 is going to be a big one. Um, pretty much every brigade activated, even my broken brigade. And I got lots of sixes, so I got lots of bonus dice. So I've got no less than six ADCs, a huge difference to the ones or twos I usually have. So we're going to go for two lots of infantry assault on both of my brigades. We are going to win this game. It's all or nothing for the Prussians as we start turn 11. Let's roll for activations. We'll start with this brigade. It's got a reroll. And it's got, no, it wasn't, it was a five. Um, so we got, we've got infantry assault off on this brigade. Then my broken brigade is active as well. And then, ah, my land there. They need infantry assault and they failed. I don't believe it. No infantry assault. Oh, that's not great. Turn 11, we've only got one more turn to go. God, this is going to be neck and neck. Right, so not too much effect from the uh, 
Prussian firing. So the French guns opened fire and caused a casualty on... What did you cause a casualty on, Dan? Oh, yeah, on the Landwehr Battalion down here. Um, otherwise, the skirmishers just exchanged fire and we knocked uh, one French skirmish base off. No casualties over here. The Prussians have deployed um, into uh, assault columns to potentially have a go at the village on the left. It is turn 12. This will be a set of critical ADC rolls. So let's start with the Prussians. Two active on table brigades, a broken brigade, which doesn't get an ADC, and our reserve brigade, which does. So we've got three ADCs. We will put infantry assault and a reroll on our land there. We needed that third one. That's critical. Let's yeah, see how Dan does. Oh, I've got a third on table. Everything on table and one off table. Uh, oh. Okay, so let's Actually, roll for allocations. All right, final turn of the game. This is going to be a huge turn. So the Prussian Landwehr did get infantry assault order off uh, and they have charged the village. They took defensive fire and took a casualty but will be charging in. The French Hussars use their forwards order to charge the guns, which they have done. We will get defensive fire from the guns. We'll see what that does in a second. And then the uh, Prussian regulars charge the other village and they took uh, both defensive fire from the village and supporting fire from that uh, column to their flank uh, and have taken a couple of casualties, uh, but they will go into contact in the village. We'll now just fire the defensive shot from the cannons. Not great. They roll a seven, uh, but not too bad. So at short range, a seven does two casualties and a discipline test on the hussars. So hussars are now at four, so a discipline test at minus one down. Okay, eight, so that minus one goes to a seven, so they stay in good order. Um, so we'll now move on to the charge results. All right, doing the charge results as the hussars go in, it's pretty much an equal roll off. With a magnificent three, I'm not gonna do very well. Dan has one by four. So cavalry versus artillery, uh, you melee with a lan and the guns melee unformed. I think this final, finally, third attack will probably destroy the remnants of this brigade. We'll see when we get to the melee section of the turn. All right, this is it. This is the melee section of turn 12. This is the very end of the game. Up to this point, the French have been holding all the objectives consistently, but we have the last Prussian counterattack going in. So we have a uh, Prussian assault against the village here to resolve. We've got the French Hussars who've just come onto the table as reinforcements who have charged home successfully against the Prussian heavy artillery battery. And we've got the Prussian land there trying to retake the village that they lost earlier in the game. Do you have a preference, Dan, as to where you'd like to start with? Um, the cavalry. All right, we'll start with the cavalry. French looking to start as they mean to carry on. OK, so uh, you start with five dice. I start with three. You are elite, so you get an extra dice, Dan. So you should be on to six. Um, but you're on four casualties, so you go down to five. You add one for, bit, for having a LAN, so you're back up to six. I lose one for being unformed. So I'm on two. I've only got two casualties, so no penalty for that. So let's see how we do. I cause a casualty. You cause three. I think the guns are gone. All right, doing this next village. Let's see how we do. Prussians going in. They cause two casualties. The Berg caused two casualties. It's a draw, we get a chance to throw in our reserves. All right, the second round of combat, the Berg and the Prussian reserves are thrown in. Oh, not too bad, only four casualties for the Berg. My God, the French have won. The desperate, wow, uh, uh, Dan has had terrible dice rolling all game, except when it's come to the critical rolls. So that's seven casualties caused by the French, four by the Prussians. That's a loss of three. The, the Prussians are thrown back and that will be a fault to test. All right, the last assault of the turn. The land they go in. They've got four dice as they try and break into the village. It caused two casualties. And the French caused two. All right, on to the second round. All right, oh, this really is key. Just before we go on, add glory. You do have glory. That gives you an extra dice. Oh, you get an extra dice. We would still get to fight a second round because it was a draw. Right. But see if you cause a casualty with it. See, if I, with the glory, it's not counted in that. Yeah, so it would have. You would. Round. You would get. Yeah, but even if you lose by one, oh, you still get to find I'll a second round. So, so just just know you roll an extra dice because you will have caused an extra casualty. 
five, so you have caused an extra casualty. And on a four, five, or six, you get one back. I got. Do I have to roll again? You have to roll again. Yeah. Yep. So these guys. We only got five casualties. All right. So still fundamentally the same rolls for the second round of combat. Because uh, if you lose by one, you still get to fight on. All right. So I get two re rolls for two misses. There's two misses. All right. So the Prussians. Have done quite well. Well, they've done exactly average. They've caused six casualties. What will the French do? Better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's done it again. <laughs> the French drive the Prussians off. That's a retreat result. That's more than two uh, retreating battalions. So that'll be another falter test. The whole Prussian army is retreating uh, and faltering. Um, each brigade is faltering. Um, I think we call it a game. Uh, Let's just work out those final casualties. Right, well, that is it. It is a, it is a French victory. Well done, Dan. It was, uh, you were, there was definitely a, a nervous moment when I did those two assaults, uh, and they both went to their second round, so they were pretty close. Uh, but with some really hot dice rolling uh, in the last turn and probably some more better strategic play by the, by the French in the game, they held off the Prussian counterattack. Um, this Russian brigade, as I said, is broken. It's got eight and five casualties and failed that final assault against the village. Um, it was a bit of a uh, uh, long odds uh, attack to try and get in. Uh, the land there here, which probably was a stronger attack as all their battalions were full strength when they started the assault, um, did go off half cock a bit and they assaulted one turn too early before they had infantry assault on, which you might have spotted. Uh, that probably didn't help their cause. And the French in the village are pretty battered. Uh, most of those units are on eight or seven or eight casualties, uh, but they're holding on and they've thrown the Prussians back. And here in the centre, the victorious uh, French Hussars, who've cleared all of the Prussian artillery away. So a uh, great result in the end for the French. Um, hope you enjoyed the game. Do remember, leave us some comments and do subscribe. Let us know what you think and what you'd like to see more of. And we'll see you all next time. Cheers, everyone. Have a great weekend.